Hi friends, it's Peggy Noe from PrettyPaperCards.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and I'm here today with my little Yorkshire Terrier, Ellie, who's looking all over and ready to take her nap. <laughs> she was trying to get into her bed and I swooped her up so that she could be on the live because she and I do it together. I don't think she totally knows that, but let me make sure we're on. I have to check and make sure it is live. There we go. So welcome. I'm so glad you're here today on this Wednesday. I hope you're having a nice Wednesday um, already. It's a, it's a good Wednesday. For me, I haven't had that much to do today. It's been kind of a nice relaxing relaxing day and it was cloudy part of the day and sunny part of the day because we're kind of getting over a, a rainstorm. Tammy, good to see you. It rained a bit yesterday and overnight, but it seems like the rain is gone. We haven't had any damage in my area. I know you're all so sweet. Hi, Roz. You're also sweet to ask, you know, how are we doing? Because um, a lot of areas in California are having rain damage and some in San Diego, but not in our area and not in my daughter's area. So I'm thankful for that. Tammy's been making cards. Good girl. Carol Schaefer, good to see you from Connecticut. How's the weather in Connecticut, Carol? We always like to have a weather report. Some of you know that if you're on here regularly, especially it seems like um, this winter there's been just a lot of a lot of weather. Linda Leonhart, I, I see you. There she is. Kay Phipps, good to see you from North Carolina. Um, how's North Carolina doing today? Kay, how's the weather out there? Jan Larrabee, good to see you from Morgan Hill. Morgan Hill, California, right? Yeah, wonderful. How's your weather? Um, and Linda's from Pennsylvania. I just love it that you guys are from all over and um, it's it's good to, it challenges my, my, geogra my geography, my United States geography. Carol Schaefer, in the 30s in Chile and Connecticut in the 30s. We're in the 60s here. Uh, low 50s. It was in the 50s yesterday. I think it's a little higher today. North Carolina for K, sunny and 60. That's nice. Kathy, hi Kathy Oderly. Um, in the 60s in Illinois. Good for you and Linda Leonhart in Pennsylvania. 37. Renee, good to see you. Um, yes, in Illinois in the 60s is good. That's a good that's a good temperature. Pennsylvania sounds burr. The, some of those who else was in the 30s? One another one of you was in the 30s, burr. But you have the right, you know, we have light I I noticed when I I noticed when I visit my son back in Massachusetts, um, the clothing is heavier. Where out here in California our clothing is lighter weight. They give us, you know, the clothing that we have to buy when we go to the store is lighter weight. It's not the heavyweight clothing that they sell back there. Because when you're in those cold temperatures, you need more. Roz, sunny and in the low 60s there for the past few days. Yes, how wonderful. That, to me, that is just kind of perfect. The high 60s and sunny is perfect because it's not too hot, not too cold. It's just crisp in a way or nice. So Ellie had a bath this morning. I surprised her and we woke up and gave her a bath right away. So she, she was kind of surprised, but she did fine. She, I really don't take her to the groomer that that often. Jan is saying, yes, Morgan Hill, California. Lots of rain the past couple weeks. And Renee, 56 in Columbus, Ohio. Okay. Not a bad temperature either. Yeah, I groom Ellie myself, really. I take her to the um, the vet to have her nails trimmed. And I, I maybe take her once a year to the groomer. Not too often. I'm scratching her chin and she likes it. She likes to have her have her chin scratched. Kimberly Colleen, good to see you. 
so um, yeah, we're just, it's just kind of a little relaxing day. So let's relax together and I have a fun fold card for you today. This is the one I had to learn. Tracy Ludeman, good to see you from Connecticut. So this is the card I've been wanting to teach you, but I'll show you that in a minute. First, I want to talk about, she wants to get down. First, I'm going to remind you about celebration, and we're going to use um, the Flight and Airy celebration paper today because it's um, a week tomorrow will be the ending of celebration, and I want to be sure that you get the products that you want, that you don't miss out on anything. As far as I know, everything is still available. Thank you, Roz, for sharing. Um, and the flight and airy beautiful the beautiful bird paper is so pretty so i'm going to try the next couple weeks until until uh celebration is over to use those products and show you the ones that i think are the prettiest to make sure or the best to make sure that you get them um, and you can let me know if you have them but what i want to show you today um i i find this is posted on my blog i finally got this telephone set um, I think I had it. It's in the mini catalog, and I just wanted to show you because I like it so much. It's called Let's Chat. I haven't posted it on my, um, on the Facebook page. I will. Hi, Linda Brady. Good to see you. Hi, Tina. I just love this telephone. I don't know what took me so long to get it. I, I loved it when I, when I first looked at the mini catalog, and for some reason, it took me a while to get it. I guess I kept thinking, well, there are others that have big suites and everything. Hi, Vicki Eakins. Of course, it has to be a pink phone. Linda Brady has two packs of the Bird DSP. It's beautiful. Anyway, this set is just so cute. Here is the, here. so it's in the mini catalog. It's called Let's Chat. A couple things I love about it. Look at this, I love this little swirly cord there's two of them and this one over here says hey it's really it's bold it's kind of bold it's a photopolymer set um so so when you stamp it it's kind of bold so you could make a black phone or a blue phone i'm going to do a couple more of these um and make them different and then i don't know if you can see let's see so right there those three little lines coming out kind of shows that the sound is coming out of the receiver there. And then they have the little word hi, they have a couple other words, and I just put them all around there because someone's saying hi coming out of the phone. I just I just think this is the cutest set. You know, you miss things in the catalog, then I saw lots of other people using it, and I just said, I have to get it. Oh, Renee has four packs, and you're gonna give one to your sister. Yeah, we're going to use it today. Okay, then I wanted to remind you about um, coming up March 5th. Hi, Marsha Long. Good to see you. Coming up March 5th um, are new online exclusives, and there are tons of them. I barely, I just got a few. You might have seen my uh, coffee card. It's called... Um, Love a Latte might be the stamp set. You know, I couldn't find the stamp set when I went to find it just a minute ago to show you guys. Um, yeah, remember, I do remember those chords, <laughs> Vicki, I do. I was trying not to say anything. I didn't want people to know how old I was. Um, pretend you didn't hear that. Okay, so this is, I think it's called Love a Latte, and this is coming out on March 5th, but demonstrators um, have been able to get it all this month. And it's just the cutest little coffee set. It comes with paper, um, dies, stamp set, ribbon, gems. It's just, Tracy likes this. Yeah, it's really cute. And so what I wanted to tell you, it's for customers starting March 5th. But if you join Stampin' Up! during um, before next uh, Thursday, before celebration ends, you not only get to order all the online exclusives, any that you want, you can order in your starter kit, but you can also get a great deal. You can get either $30 more in product, which is, you know, that's that's a stamp set and some ribbon or something, 
or you can get the glass mat that I'm using today that I've been using. I'm probably going to just keep on using it because I really like it. So it's a great time to join Stampin' Up, especially if you're interested in getting more bang for your buck, so to, so to speak. Yes, most rotary phones were black. That's right, Kimberly. <laughs> we're, we're thinking about phones. Anyway, there are many more. I, I think I showed on my blog also a, a little wagon set. There's just so many. I have, um, I have the wagon set here. This is an online exclusive filled with fun. I gave my card away to a friend because I wanted to give her a really special card. So now I need to make some more with this cute little wagon set. And um, this is one I'm going to use a lot. It's called Simply Scripted, Sweetly Scripted. And I love this. And these are online exclusives. They came out with so many, like 30 things or something, just a lot. So I wanted to remind you of that. March 5th or get your starter kit now. You can get a bunch. And you can, if you have questions about that, just email me, Peggy at prettypapercards.com. Okay, so the card we're going to make today is an arrow card. Oh, Marsha, yeah, I put her down for her nap already. <laughs> we're going to make an arrow card. It's going to be something like this. We're going to make it a little different, um, but still with the flight and airy paper. And I have a couple of samples for you made with other papers and stuff. So let me turn you down. Okay, so here's one that's kind of more masculine. This is made with the, um, what paper is this? Um, Nature Sweetness paper. Let me bring this over so you can see it better. And it opens up like that, and there's your I'm going to show you. It took me a while. You know, this involves math. You know that. So it took me a while to get the math figured out. I had to go over to Dr. Robbins over the weekend and take her class so I could figure it out. <laughs> hey, Robin, thank you. Yes. This is the one we made at her class. Is this not beautiful? With the lavender paper, the whole lavender sweet and some butterflies. Isn't that gorgeous? Let me pull it down here so you guys can see it better. I just love it. And I learned and I've been practicing. I've got a whole bunch that I practiced on. That is gorgeous. And then this is one that I made um, when she taught this over at my house at a team event. And I didn't learn it then. That's why I had to go back to, <laughs> back to her. But um, this is made with the um, most adored paper that I also love, that celebration paper that's going to be um, gone on uh, February 29th. Isn't that, so this is a really fun, fun card. If you've never made an arrow card, you're going to want to make one. And so get ready and write down your measurements. Robin does make beautiful cards. <laughs> Hello, Lori Mantovi. Good to see you. So this is what we're going to do. I'm going to do a little something different in the center, but this is our sample card and it opens up like this. So you can write whatever you need to write in here. But the tricky part is getting these little folds. Okay, so get ready and we'll, hopefully it'll turn out right, but I think it will. Okay, so here are all my things. We're going to start with um, an eight and a half by five and a half piece of uh, cardstock, and this is Flirty Flamingo, and I'm using this color because it goes with the Flight and Airy paper, which I love, that I want to make sure everybody gets because it's so beautiful. So let me get on my glasses here. And we're, first we're going to score it at four and a quarter. And what we need to say at this point is keep the cutting blade, and you can't see me, but I've got them here. Keep the cutting blade out of the way because we're just going to be scoring. Okay, so four and a quarter, we want to score it in half as, as normal. And then we have to do some measuring. Okay, so I'm just going to set this aside for a minute while we measure and make a pencil mark, um, a couple of pencil marks, and plus you need your bone folder. So I want to get 
all the folds really burnished so that the whole thing, so it works right, if you know what I mean. Okay, so here's my ruler. And so what we're gonna do is make a tick mark halfway on the, let's say this is the front, because I the bone folder made a little mark there. The front, halfway on this side, halfway on this side, and halfway on this side. So that's where the measuring comes in. So we know this is four and a quarter, so we're going to want to put a little mark, and I'm gonna have to put my head down really low to get it just right. I wanna put a little mark at two and an eighth. Okay, right here, two and an eighth, right there. And so what we can do is turn it around because we know that's the, a quarter of four and a, oh, a half of four and a quarter is two and an eighth. You guys correct me if I say something wrong. Okay, so now the length along the bottom is five and a half. And half of that is two and three quarters. Okay, so we're going to hold that and put our little tick mark at two and three quarters. Alrighty, the measuring is done. Done, done. Now we can bring our paper trimmer back up. And again, remembering just to have your um, uh, embossing blade right there. No cutting blade. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to I'll just tell you kind of where we're going here. We're gonna uh, score a line from this corner to the center and from this corner to the lower center. Then we're gonna score another more lines from here to the center and here to the center. That's the goal. And so you have to really pay attention and learn where your cutting uh, trough is. I think they call it a cutting tr trough, something like that. Okay, so I'm putting my fold right over that, and then I'm going to get, this is my little half mark, okay, halfway. So what we're gonna do is put this up here. We're gonna go from this corner to the half mark. All right, ready, and score. There we go. Now one thing I learned, is that we have to make sure to always hit that same mark that we did in the beginning. That's where I was having trouble. I was going a little to the side of it and then it didn't come out right. So again, from the center, and we're gonna come now to this corner. And you get it right over that little scoring trough, okay, the, where the blade goes in. Okay, there we go. Now, as long as we're here, we'll go from this side half to that little mark. And that looks pretty good. Score there. And we'll go around to the other side. Again, making sure everything comes to that little point. And here's the half mark here. And get that right up there. Are you with me? Okay. There we go. Okay, there it is. Can you see those score marks? Let me see if I can, I don't know if you can see them very well, but I'll show you because we're gonna fold on them now. But the first thing we're gonna do is take our little eraser and erase our marks, because we don't want that to show. I'm just gonna erase those. And then what creates the card is to fold on the score lines, okay. So here we go. We're gonna fold on our first one, and there it comes to that point. That's the important point. That's why they call it the arrow card, I suppose, because it forms like a little arrow. We're gonna burnish that really well, and then we're gonna fold the second one, and it comes right to the same point, and we're burnished right there. So everything is coming to that little point right there. Okay, other side. It's coming to the point. And then this one right here. Right to the point. Okay. Now, let's see 
Kimberly, good to see you. Navon, good to see you. I haven't seen you here before. Welcome. Now what we do is we just fold those things up and there's your arrow. See that? Isn't that kind of neat? And then if you, you can still see it, but that's what it looks folded. There's that same arrow that we saw on the sample. Holly, did I say hi to you? Good to see you, Holly. Okay, now what we want to do, this is what happens to me, is I get this little point kind of messed up. And I think it comes in possibly my burnishing. I want it to come to, there we go. I pressed it, pressed it in, because you want it to come to really a point there. Oh, she lives by you, excellent. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to glue these down so they don't move because we want our arrow to stay straight. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue, not too much because we don't want it to scoot out of there. Just a little bit to glue that down. And then we're gonna do some fun stuff. Okay, so that part is glued down. Now we can glue down this section. And again, you wanna make sure not to come out too far. So I see that folds there, so I'm going to go within that area with my glue and just hold it for a few minutes. Ah, you're Kim's friend. That's sweet. Good to have you both. I like that. Well, you're all my friends. We're online friends because we have been together quite, many of you have been with me almost since the beginning of my, um, when I started my lives. And I've been doing Facebook Lives. I started it, I think I started it during COVID. So what, about three years maybe? I think about three years. Because I couldn't have classes, so I started doing this. Yes, okay, so now we're gonna glue. There's a little glue came out there. I'm gonna just scooch that in. And hold that down till it dries, and then we need to get this little edge down here. Oops, it's kind of a bunch. Okay. Oh, I hope I didn't go. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness sakes. I'm just talking and just making a big mess here. Okay, hold on a second. Well, you know, when things happen here, we know they happen, I know they happen for you too. So when we make mistakes, we fix them together because we all make mistakes. So that doesn't matter because that's on the underside, but what does matter is all of this. So I'm gonna get my gum eraser here and we're gonna try to erase that stuff. I wasn't planning on covering it with paper, but you know what I could if it doesn't come out right. Maybe I will cover that with paper. Let's see. Let's see if I can get that off. This is what happens when I'm doing a couple things at one time. Oh, goodness sakes. Okay, let's see what we're left with here. Oh, my goodness. What a mess. Okay. Get really rough with it. I may end up putting a piece of paper over that. Oh my goodness sakes. Okay, let's do that. Let's find another little piece of our flight and airy paper. You know, when you get in trouble, when you make a mistake, you just find something, a way to fix it. So let's see here. Here are my, this is my little packet where I keep everything. So I'm kind of thinking, this almost looks good. Why don't we try this? We'll try just a little bit of this and we'll cut a couple of little bits. And we want a little bit to be, let's measure it here about, I think if we got an inch by two and a half, we might be able to figure it out. You guys don't mind if you play around with me, do you? 
we'll just see how to fix things together. Let's go. That's two and a half, and this will be one. And let's see if this will slip in there and cover that little mistake. Hmm. Hmm. Nope. Oh boy. Okay, let's. What I'll do is I'm just going to cut it out from the back. Okay. Nope, still not long enough. Yay! That's going to work. Okay. Good. And I'm going to cut another piece like that. Hello, Polly Libby. Good to see you. We're fixing a mistake that I made. Oh, that's still not long enough. So we're learning how to how to fix mistakes. Okay, let's see if we can. Oops. Let's see if this will work. Okay, so we're, what we're going to do is glue this down in here where I made this mistake and I made a big mess. And I'm just going to glue that down and we will have this little flap have some designer series paper on it. That's what you do when you make a mistake. Okay. And then we're going to cut it with our paper snips. We're just going to cut right along that line. And I hope Robin's not still watching. She'll be going, oh my gosh, Peggy, what are you doing? Okay, let's see. Okay, there we go. Aha, cute. Okay, now we're just gonna put a little glue in there. I think this might turn out nice after all. You know, mistakes lead to pretty things many times. So there's one piece, and now let's put this one over here. Well, I kind of glued that in, right? So let's see what we can do here. Are you guys with me? Are you? Now you're learning what to do if you make a mistake on this card, this arrow card. Okay, we'll just let that dry for a few minutes. So here's kind of what it's supposed to look like, but we're gonna we're just gonna change that up a little bit because of the boo-boo. Robin! <laughs> you would have started over? <laughs> oh yes, I know. <laughs> oh gosh. Well, sometimes when you're when you're live, you get just a little bit nervous. So I'm trying to make do, and it, I guess it can teach the rest of us in case we make a mistake what we're supposed to be doing. Oh my goodness sakes! Okay, there we go. So, alrighty, we got that. Now, we're going to create this piece to put on the front. And I'm debating about to, what to put on the underside. For the underside, I had, what was I going to do with the, I think maybe we'll just, should we put more of this? Let's see, let's put this piece on next. Okay, so what I did here is I cut a, four by five and a quarter piece of the designer series paper and we want to cut a triangle to fit inside of this area. So we're going to do a little more measuring and let me get out my ruler again. We're going to put, we're going to make the center of this. We're going to mark the center like we did before on the actual card. However, this is only five and a quarter so half of five is two and a half. No, half of five is two and a half. I think this is going to be two and a half plus an eighth. So a half plus an eighth. You're really seeing my lack of math ability. But I think that is the half. <laughs> yes, I created a new 
something new. Okay, so now we're going to get our cutting blade and we're going to go from the half mark to the corner, okay? And I hope everything goes fine from now on. I think it will. Okay, there we go. And then from the corner to the half mark again. I normally don't do cards that take too much math, but this one's so pretty I just had to do it. I wanted to do it because it's so pretty. Whoops. Okay, so I'm going to erase my little corner, and then this is going to fit perfectly right on there. Isn't that pretty? I love this paper. Don't you guys love it? Good save. <laughs> Creative opportunity, yep. Okay, so I just think it looks so pretty. I want to find, I want to see what we're going to do on these corners here. Okay, I see a tiny dot of blue right over here. Get rid of that. So there's the beginning of the card. Now I'm actually going to do it just a little different from. Robin in that I'm going to put the white down and then I'm going to put some designer series paper underneath here. And well, we could use these corners, but they're blue. I don't know how that will look, but what we're going to do is put a five and a quarter by four piece of basic white for you to write on. Okay. Right in here. Just like that. Okay. Now let's see if we would like to have blue. We could have blue. What do we think of blue? You guys let me know what you think. I kind of don't think it's the best though. Hi Cindy Reed, good to see you. Let's see what other backs we have to the paper. Where's my um, what other colors we might want. Well, this is very pretty. We could have this. Would we prefer to have it like that? I kind of think so, don't you? I kind of think I like this Lost Lagoon. You like it just with the white? You guys like it with the white? And then it shows off the arrow? We could do that. Okay, that's easier. Let's leave it with the white just, just because. And we may put some flowers down there. How about that? Okay, good idea. All right, now we have to decorate the center. So what I went ahead and did, I, I used the Thoughtful Expressions, beautiful, really, what I think is one of the most beautiful bundles in the in the mini catalog, the spring mini. Yes, blue would go great. Sponge the white. Oh, that's an idea. So I I'm using this bundle and I decided to use a couple of these to cut out some things and I did that early on so we wouldn't have to spend the time doing it. And so we can put this little circle thing there and then I cut the the bird. How was I thinking the bird would go? I guess like that. I think we should put the bird on before we put this entire thing on the point, on the point of the arrow. Let's do that. I, I sing, you know, I focused on one of the birds and I put the die right on the bird, right over the bird. So I cut out the area of the paper that I wanted to get. I mean, these birds are so sweet. Isn't that just the sweetest bird? Very, very cute. Okay, so we can put the bird right here. And let's think maybe about what we're going to do on our sides first. If we're going to leave them white, I have a butterfly and I have a couple of flowers. So we could put the flowers. Um, if we wanted to. 
you always wanted to make this card, but you were intimidated and never tried it, Becky. <laughs> I, I totally, that's what I'm talking about. It's intimidating. It is, it really is. I don't know if I like those. Um, let's see what's on the stamp set, if there's anything else we want. We could kind of stamp these. This is pretty, this is what I put on the envelope, this one here, this stamp. Let's give that a try. We should probably do a sample before we officially do it. Let's do a little sample. Hmm. Let me grab a white sample. I don't know if you're about me, but um, if you're like me, but I like to do a, kind of do a sample first. Oh, you want them to come out with more bird papers. That's not a bad idea. Everybody has just loved this paper, but the flowers also have been a big, a big hit. The flowers on the paper. Okay, we're gonna just test this and see if we wanna put that stamp right there. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not crazy about it. What do you guys think? It kind of looks good up there. Make Put two of them. Let's try that. We're just going to go with the way it comes out, okay? So I think what we're going to do is we will put one flower down here and one flower up here. Just like that. Okay, not too bad. The problem is this one's going to be backwards, but I kind of like it. One flower there and one up here. Okay, not too bad. Alrighty, here we go. So now we're ready to put our bird on the front and we're gonna do that with some Stampin' Dimensionals. So this is gonna be kind of a different card, but we're gonna be okay with it. Chickadees, ah. Okay, so here's our pretty bird. And now we need our sentiment also. And the sentiment is from this uh, Thoughtful Expression set, which says, enjoy your day. I really love this set. So let's put our sentiment on here. A little bit of ink on the corners. Okay. Hmm, a little crooked. We'll turn it over and do it again. Better. And while I have the ink out, let's go ahead and uh, put that flower on our envelope. Thank you, Tina. You know, it's fun to just play around. I, I, I really love this stamp set and die set. It's really, really great. Okay, so one little thing here is that sometimes the edges don't look really flat. Do you ever notice that? And I go back and press them down with the bone folder. Sometimes when you cut them, they just, let's see, which is the straight one? That's the straight one. Okay, so now we're gonna put this on to, next to our bird, our little sentiment. I'm going to trim off the edges at an angle. I'm kind of into that right now. And you know what I might do is I might put one of these flowers right over that. Let's put a flower up on a dimensional and see how that turns out. And then we'll tuck the little sentiment right under there. All right, then we'll glue this down. Okay. Enjoy your day. I like it. Becky White, good to see you from Kentucky. The flowers are cute. I, I fussy cut the flowers. There was a, where was my other flower? I 
add another one. Oh, we still can put on our um, butterfly. We could definitely do that. Let's um, let's do the let's use our blending brush and, and color our butterfly with flirty flamingo. Let's do that. Thank you guys. Let's just add a little color here to our butterfly to make him stand out on the card. I love the way Robin used the butterflies. That's what gave me the idea. And what I've noticed with these butterflies is add more color to the tips of their wings and it makes them it really makes them stand out. Okay, just like that. I'm just going to wipe that off so it doesn't get on something important. Okay, so here's our card, and we can just put the butterfly right up there. How about that? Can you see? Put the butterfly right there. Let me get um, a little glue dot. There's a glue dot little mini glue dot and we'll put that right under the butterfly's body right there and then we're going to put a few little gems on and then we'll be done okay just like that and then you can bend him up like that isn't that kind of cute and here's the envelope okay now let's see what we have in, so in the way of gems I love these rainbow adhesive back dots and all the colors kind of go with this card. A great save. <laughs> Thank you. I love the butterflies too. They're not even that expensive and a lot of them come in one package. So I think the bright ones, the bright, um, which one, let's see, it is Flirty Flamingo. Okay, so it goes perfectly. That's the color. And I think the bright color looks really, really ties in. So let's just put a few of these around like that. That'll just really add to our card. One up there. I like to press them down. And then we'll add a third one, maybe right down here. Okay. There's our card. Very cute. Well, this is the prize for next week. So, no it isn't, no it isn't. But it could be if you guys want it. Hi Julia, good to see you. There's an awesome ruler on Amazon and it has every tick mark with the measurements. It really helped you. Oh, Cindy, thank you, I'll check it out. I'll definitely check that out. The prize for this week is last week's card. And the prize for next week are some of these beautiful bloomin' pearls that I love. So let me turn you up. Um, thank you, Julia. Okay, let me turn you up. There we are. Okay, so this gift that I'm giving away this week um, was won by Michelle Eaton over on YouTube. Michelle, congratulations. Sometimes she pops over, I think, on Facebook, but mostly she's over on YouTube. And this is the card we made last week. So I have your address, Michelle. I'll get this out to you. So next week, um, I'll keep this card. And I will, what I'll do is I'll keep the card and the Bloom and Pearls. And the person who wins next week can choose between the card and the pearls. Okay? So... I'll show I'll keep them and show them to you again and then you can make your choice as to whether you want your the card or the pearls. Okay, guys, thank you so much for watching and staying with me during my little boo-boo there. Um, but I know we all make mistakes, and so it does turn into a wonderful opportunity. And I think we did make it look really pretty. So thank you for all your help. And I will see you on Friday. Um, we might make a telephone. I'm not sure, but just saying, I'm so into that telephone. We might make.